Take a bow. Take oh, a bow. Hi. Take a bow. <laughs> We're delighted to welcome the chair of the Republican National Committee to her first CPAC. Yes, my very first. As many of you know, Ronna McDaniel previously served as the chairman of the Michigan Republican Party. And I hear all those Wolverine State fans just to our left here, Ronna, they're excited to see you. And she had prescient insight into the 2016 campaign by understanding that Michigan, like Ohio and Pennsylvania and the entire Rust Belt, were in play and that that inside straight would deliver the presidency to Donald J. Trump. Yep. So congratulations Thank you. Thank on you. seeing what few others saw. She is the second woman to be elected the chairman of the RNC and has been a foot soldier in the Republican ranks and the conservative army for many years and now a general officer. So it's great to have you here. Thanks, and I wanted to ask first, Rana, about Michigan and what you saw in 2016 that Kellyanne Conway saw, but few others did. What were the factors that led you to believe that the resources and time should be put into Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, et cetera, in 2016? Well, first, let me say thank you so much for having me. We love you, CPAC. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And where's my Michigan folks? Where's Michigan? We love Michigan. Uh, you know, Michigan, when I took over as Michigan chair, part of my passion for taking over was that I thought Michigan should be in play in a presidential election. We were a state that was red during midterm elections. We had a Republican governor, attorney general. We had a supermajority in the Senate and the House. And I thought, if we had the right candidate, this is a state that could take off. And President Trump, then candidate Trump, ignited a flame in our state and created a new coalition of voters that we haven't seen since Ronald Reagan. And so to see him come and talk about fair trade, to talk about putting America first, to say things like, every time we look at something at this country, as, as leaders in this country, we need to make sure it's affecting or helping America, bring American jobs. It's gonna help American workers. That vision connected with our voters and coupled with the RNC and the state party and our ground game and our ability to recognize what was happening with the voters and to turn them out, we won for the first time since 1988. <laughs> and in such an important win in 2016. And now we roll into the midterms. And as you know, the president was here this morning, told us all about the history of midterm elections and how they haven't always worked out so well for the party that controls the White House. As you're looking at 2018, what are the key factors for Republican victories? Well, how, did you love, how much did you love the president today? <laughs> Wasn't he amazing? There's no better messenger for our party who gets that enthusiasm going and who relates to the voters how much we need them than our president. And he is exactly right. We need more Republicans, and we have to keep these majorities in 2018. History is against the party that holds the White House. In 100 years, the party that's held the White House has only kept the majority in the, in the House three times, three times in that first midterm. We want to defy history, and we need Republicans energized and engaged. And when you look at Democrats, they were arrogant in 2016, they were complacent, they thought they were gonna win the White House easily with Hillary Clinton. That is not the case in 2018, and we have to recognize that as a party, and everyone has to wake up with that sense of urgency, that same urgency that we wanted to win the White House, we have to use to protect our majorities in the Senate and the House, because our country is on a comeback. Jobs are coming back. Unemployment is at record low. We're taking care of our military. We're taking care of our veterans. This is a country worth fighting for, and if we don't do it, no one else will. So my call to all of you is stay engaged. We're gonna need you in 2018. You're allowed to applaud. It's, it's no, no prohibition. I wanna ask you though about the key word that you used just a moment ago, and that is energy. Energy. The media has said that there's an energy gap or an enthusiasm gap between the D's and the R's right now. There's no enthusiasm gap here at CPAC, is Not there? Not at all. But do you see out in the hinterlands an enthusiasm gap right now? And if you do, what can be done about that? Yeah, so opposition is very uniting. And the Democrats have found this opposition with resist and obstruct. It's not a vision, but it's uniting. And they're using that as their rally call. 
And sometimes when things are going well, you sit back and go, everything's okay. I don't need to work as hard. The country's doing great. Jobs are coming back. We're fine. That is not what we should be thinking because as quickly as we just gain this in this one year turnaround, we can lose it. And so complacency is our worst enemy, en en uh, enemy going into a midterm. The Democrats have the energy. We need to ramp up and have that same energy going into these midterms or we will lose. And you, you mentioned another key word there just a moment ago, and that was the resistance that we see from the other side. What should be the Republican response to the, frankly, the hatred and the venom that's spewed forth by the left constantly? What should be our response? Well, let's look at what they're resisting. So Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are resisting more jobs. They're resisting record unemployment. They're resisting a stronger military. They're resisting a, a better America. They're rooting against these tax cuts. She calls $1,000 bonuses crumbs. They are so out of touch. They are the elite redistributionist party of the status quo. They do not want to see this country go further, and they're resisting it. And we are the, the party of a vision. We are the party of the average American family. And we are saying, we want you to do better. We want our country to rise. And it's happening under President Trump and Republican leadership. So if we don't keep that in energy, if we don't give the energy, and I know you have it here at CPAC, and I'll tell you what, so encouraging as the RNC chair, is we have had 500,000 new small dollar donors since President Trump has taken office. So that energy is out there. We just have to all work together to make sure we can fight against the negativity of the Democrats, because who wants to go back to the dark ages of Pelosi and Schumer? <laughs> who wants to go back there? I think we're all ready to protect America's comeback. Are you with me? Here we are. You and I are both from the northeast part of our great nation, the Rust Belt, if you will, Michigan and Pennsylvania. And I want to country. walk into the weeds just for sure. a moment to talk about something that's particular to the Keystone State sure. and to the many folks from Pennsylvania here today. And that is the fact that the Democrats weren't very happy that Republicans and Donald Trump in particular carried our states. And the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania has stepped in now to redraw the congressional district map for 2018. How dangerous do you see that as being? It is so dangerous what's just happened in Pennsylvania. It is complete judicial overreach. They have completely thrown out the will of the voters who elected their legislature, legislators to draw the maps and the judiciary has come back and said, you know what, forget what the voters want, forget what constitutionally the legislature is supposed to do. We are going to draw the maps. It is frightening. Every American should be paying attention. And it also underlines why President Trump is so important and keeping the Senate is so important. President Trump, not only did he give us Neil Gorsuch, who we love, <laughs> to replace Justice Scalia, a lion of the Supreme Court, but we've also put in more circuit court judges in this first year than in any other first year of a presidency. That is so critical, but everyone should be paying attention to these judicial races, and especially to Pennsylvania, this extreme judicial overreach, it is judicial gerrymandering, and I hope the Supreme Court looks at it and, and rejects it. Here, here. You took office, I believe, or were elected to the chairmanship the day before Donald Trump was sworn in as president. In your first year, what has been the greatest accomplishment of the RNC and the thing that you point to with the most pride? So I've been in it over, just over a year, and I love traveling the country and seeing the enthusiasm and meeting with so many grassroots activists who care so much about our country and give their time. I think one of the great accomplishments is we have raised the most money of any political party in history in an off-year election at the RNC, $132 million. That's we have $40 million cash on hand. We have $23 million more, than, 23 times more than the Democrats. We've doubled them in fundraising. We're in 22 states. We are the most prepared we've ever been going into a midterm election. We've trained more volunteers, and we are ready to keep our majorities in the Senate and the House and governorships across this country. So real quickly, as we conclude here, with this room full of conservative activists, 10,000 strong, What's the thing that you would like them, going home with enthusiasm, education, and the vim and vigor to really get involved? What are the things specifically that you'd like to see them do in 2018 to be more involved than they already are and to be more effective? 
Well, first, I want to say thank you. Thanks to every single person here who helped us win the White House in 2016. We couldn't have done it without you. And now I'm going to ask you to help us again to keep these majorities. This is a country worth fighting for. I love this country so much. Go to GOP.com, sign up, be a volunteer. We need you knocking doors. We need you to have a rally every day in your neighborhood, talking to your neighbors, talking to your family, talking to your friends about the good things that are happening in this country because we cannot go back. We need to fight for our future, and we're going to need each and every one of you to win in November. So please go and support the GOP and support our president and help us keep these majorities. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the Republican National Committee, Ronna McDaniel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.